by my brother as a colt. As a two-year-old, he decided to sell them. He sold them at an auction. The people that bought them knew nothing about horses. First time horse owners. He kind of cleaned them up pretty good. So then they traded them to a horse dealer. He sold them to an Amishman. The Amishman couldn't handle them. So then a horse puller friend of mine bought him. And then I bought him back from him. He's kind of a bad actor. Chased my nephew out of the pasture. We used to feed silage with him and be loading the silage wagon and all of a sudden he'd just rear it and take off. First time we had him in the woods, he had him hobbled and started a chainsaw and my wife was on lines and he tried to walk out of the woods on his hind legs. Well, actually the two of them both did. When he was a two-year-old, before he got him sold, had him running with a couple 30-year-old mares and he ended up breeding one of them and that's how we got this guy here. And he's, he was probably sneakier than that one was when he was young. Because he ran Paul and Matthew <laughs> out of the pasture. This guy still got his moments. Yeah, but Stoney's trustworthy enough, I mean, I'd put my kids on him before I'd ever put them on a pony. Yeah, he actually got to be quite lovable after he got older. And I don't know where he got his chubbiness because he's not fat and that mare was not a real fat horse either, but he's fat. Stepping over was one of the things they didn't know when they got here. The guy worked around them all the time. He never made them get over. Get over, get over here, that boy. And him and that mare, they do good together just because they're go, go, go type horses? Yeah. I think where we got him from, she got kind of frustrated because that gelding was so slow. She feels a lot more comfortable with a horse that's her speed. Get over. I don't know if you can see it, but this is a nylon harness. It's not leather. And the main reason for that is the weight, right? Yeah. The weight is one thing good. Harness with the hames, everything only weighs. Uh, 21 pounds, I think. What would a leather harness weigh? I am not sure. A lot more than that.
Marco. Venga. Venga. When we first got her, at this point, she would just turn and try to run out of the barn. Didn't matter if you're holding on to her or in front of her, she'd run you over. show a couple things I do a little different on this horse I have a nose an extra nose band on him it keeps his mouth shut makes him a lot lighter on the lines it's kind of the same principle like the cabasson and the dressage horses and even on thoroughbreds you see that hitch horses you that's where I got it from was a hitch guy told me to do that keeps his mouth shut it's easier on the lines I also carry this other short spreaders I hook the lines across, holds the line up. When they're standing a lot, they don't put their head down, they don't get the line over the end of the pole. With good horses, you don't have to worry about that. You can always stop them and unhook it, but if you got young horses and you get the line under the pole, you can get a wreck. So I do that, and it keeps the, keeps the lines up off the pole. Works out really handy. Just a couple things I do different than a lot of people. about her she caught under the routine of things here real 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 quick the gelding not so much the other thing I do is I chain my neck yoke onto the end of the pole it comes from starting a lot of colts and you don't want them to walk that neck yoke off the end when you don't have them all the way hooked up yet. How many uh, horses do you think you've broke to drive? A couple hundred. Really? Probably. We used to go to the sales barn every month and pick up horses if they were riding horses or whatever and if there's a match set or something that looked a little drafty and we bring them home and work the tar out for a month and take them back and buy some more. So this is the collar. That's where they pull off of or push off of. The hames attached to the collar. Go to the traces. Go back. The horse pushes forward against the collar. Pulls the sleigh forward. So all the other straps are just to help keep those in place? Pretty much. Here we go. This is a breast strap. Holds it. This is called a combination snap. Goes back. Attaches to the quarter straps underneath. Go to the breaching. That's what holds your load back. From sliding up into the horses or if you're going downhill from the back. Oh. This is a belly band. Kind of keeps everything in line. I run these straps extra. It's kind of a when horses are really pulling, it keeps the belly band from sliding backwards and getting back on the diaphragm. So I run these straps on, on all the horses just to keep the, the belly band in place. She has a twisted wire bit. That's uh, barely enough to hold her. He's got a uh, lever bit. A lot of times I'll put him on the bottom if he's feeling real frisky. Helps hold him. 
Right now I've got it on top, so it's basically just a bar bit. Any other questions? What about the, what's the purpose of the blinders then? The blinders are basically so they can't see behind them. It keeps them focused forward, just like on a racehorse when they put blinkers on them. Keeps them focused forward. My dad always tells a story that when he was a kid and they farmed all the horses, they had a four-year-old mare and uh, they used her everywhere. And the first time they put her on the binder, she could see the reel coming and she tried to take off. So they ended up stuffing a gunny sack in here to keep her from, because she'd tip her head up and she could see the reel behind her. She tried to run away from that. So there's a lot of people working without blinds and if you break them that way, it's just fine. She's kind of fidgety that way. She'll get over it. She likes to chew on that bit. Now the previous owner, was that her original owner? Well, he bought her as a foal, as a weanling. Oh, okay. Oops. See on the evener here, it's adjustable. Her evener, or her single tree hooks on the outside, his on the inside. Gives him, uh, gives her more, more leverage. Gives him more of the pull. He's just a lot bigger horse, and he's a lot more experienced in the woods too. But I think after she gets some experience, she'll be able to hang with him on an even load. Basically, what we've been doing all winter is clearing up wind damage from last summer. That's basically what we're doing over here. We're... The big one just completely uprooted it. There's a lot of trees that got taken down. a bad spot to get in there. Terrible spot. Hey, we're spotting this whole woods. What, must be a couple big roots or something? Yeah. We've been in here a few years ago, too. This used to be just super thick in here, and now it's all dying and falling and getting wind blown. How long have you been taking her in the woods here with Stubb? 
fourth time, fifth time. Yeah. Oh, really? So she's pretty inexperienced. Push out underneath. What I always did before was just left them hooked on here. Did that for years, but then you didn't want to lift on the four cart. So then this year I put a hook up here. So actually I pull farther down and I don't get that bad lift on the four cart. Now it pulls off of this, not up here.
pretty happy with how she's doing in the wood. Yeah, she needs more experience. She's, she's not as good as the old team, but... She'll work hard all right. Debbie says I try to trust her more than I should, being that she's pretty new, but she's used to the old team and just doing things a certain way. But she's not a kicker or biter or runaway or... Some people might think she looks like she wants to run away, but actually she's pretty well behaved. She's brave, that's what I like about her. She'll drive through whatever you aim her at. A lot of horses won't go through thick brush or whatever. She's pretty brave that way. She'll kind of just go wherever you point her. My nephew asked her how she was going. I said she's kind of a hothead, but I kind of like that about her. I don't think she's got any quit in her. This clearing up blowdowns, it ain't near as pretty as just going out and cutting trees down and bringing them in. It's kind of ugly work. firewood with horses growing up? Well, we never really cut firewood until the early 70s with the oil embargo. When oil prices went up so high, then we put in a wood stove. And then we cut, we really didn't have, we just had riding horses that we broke, that we used to use in the garden and whatnot. And then we just used those in the woods. And actually, I like the, this size horse a lot better than a big horse in the woods. She can turn around three times for a big horse to have, try to figure out what they're doing. She's like the perfect size in the woods. He's even a little too, well, he's plenty big, that's for sure. But you get that big 18 hand elephants that weigh 2,400 pounds, unless you got real good open woods. In this thick crap here we got, you need something a little more agile and laid on its feet. That's where we baited the bear right back in there. That's where that really big one was on your trail camera? Yeah, right back in there. One time I had Josh with him. I said, let's go see what the, let's go check the bear bait. He said, is there a bear there? And I said, might be. He just runs in there. <laughs> he just heads up the trail. Like, I don't care if there's a bear there. I'm going to go see it. team back when you're just cutting down these trees like you did those ones yeah yeah we can carry the saws and everything and it's the big thing she needs to learn is patience that's something uh the guy that had her he had his regular routine he parked there he parked his wagon in the same spot and uh that's all she knew was that routine he didn't know he just he even, he even put the lines on in the barn. He didn't make them stand to put the lines on. They stood side by side in the same stall. He put the lines on and backed them out. Look, like there's a lot more to come out of here, dude. Yeah, it's pretty gnarly back in here. Yeah, it's rougher. You have to get some snow and you have to get a trail kind of packed. There's some nasty holes back in here.
So is it your plan with her then just to kind of retire Stony? Yeah. He's done his job. He's 24? Yeah. He's got a lot of nervous energy. Okay, so people are gonna ask what the bag's for. Because that gilding is terribly afraid of everything. So just, uh, what is it? Just this? something to give them to get used to. Desensitizing, is that the? Desensitizing, I guess that's the modern term for it. He's afraid of the sound of crumpling feed bags, amongst a lot of other things.